Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this um, briefing for the 2020 Biomaker Challenge. Um, I will just introduce myself and uh, my colleagues who are here as well, and then we'll get started with talking about the challenge this year, um, what it involves and how you can apply. Uh, so, my name is Stephanie Norwood. I am the uh, events coordinator um, for the University of Cambridge Synthetic Biology Network and Open Plant. So, it's my job to organise events like this uh, to help researchers uh, with training and uh, networking and uh, challenges, projects, things like this, uh, all around synthetic biology. Uh, and I work with Professor Jim Haslov at the university. Um, Jim, are you just able to introduce yourself as well? Sure, I'll just turn on. Hi, I'm Jim Haslop here and welcome to the, uh, the, the mixer. And um, so I guess just as a way of introduction, many of you probably know me already, but we've been running this um, activity for a number of years now, and it grew out of some of the um, project-based learning exercises that we ran <clears throat> as part of the iGEM competition and we've created a, a more local broader um, activity around Biomaker over the last few years and um, it's I guess the primary objective is to bring new people together for people to both you know exercise this again garner new ones by looking at um, different ways of putting together uh, electronics and sensors and biology and 3D printing, etc. Um, but to do that in a way where we can mix, particularly uh, mixing biologists with computer scientists, with engineers and physical scientists and bringing people together and also across different institutions. And so the main funding agencies um, are framed around the Open Plant Project, which crosses Cambridge and Norwich and also um, an EPSERC, uh, sorry, an, I should say a NERC NSF um, activity, grant activity around sensing in the environment. So with this kind of funding, it's a it's a good um, excuse or rationale for bringing people together. So we hope that the mixer will give you an insight into what we've done and, and what opportunities there might be. I'll leave it at that. Next step. Thanks. Great. I'll just uh, share my screen. What is Biomaker? Jim's already uh, spoken a little bit about this already. Um, but Biomaker has been running for a number of years now with the idea of funding interdisciplinary projects that bring together small teams of biologists, engineers, computer scientists to work on uh, interdisciplinary projects. Uh, so we're funded by Open Plant and uh, several of the UK's research councils as well as uh, the National Science um, Foundation in America. Uh, and uh, basically, we're, we're providing funding and support to help people, uh, as Jim said, come together in these teams and start working on projects. Uh, so, so far we've funded over 80 projects uh, and they come in a variety of different shapes and sizes and areas that we cover. Um, so what does a Biomaker project actually look like? So uh, I've just taken a few ideas here um, of previous projects and the kind of areas that we're looking at. So they range from everything from uh, instrumentation and microscopy to software projects, um, microfluidics, 3D printing, and in different kinds of areas of biology as well. So uh, cell-free biology, synthetic biology, uh, biomedical, um, plant sciences. And we have also previously run projects that look at uh, education and outreach as well. Uh, so, if you take a look at our website, www.biomaker.org, and have a look at the projects tab, you can see a whole back catalogue of projects that have been run and Biomaker before, get some inspiration, have a look around and see, see what's happened. Uh, you can also have a look on our Hackster page. Um, so this is a platform that we use for documenting all of our projects. So you can take a look at what people have done on there as well. I think when we go back, to the, um, the floor view, um, there's a couple of little banners uh, at the side and there's links there to both of those websites. So you can take a look. Um, 
We also have with us today uh, Francesco Siriello, who was a participant in Biomaker last year, who's kindly agreed to come and tell us a little bit about his project last year, um, what they did and what it was like to take part in Biomaker. So I will stop sharing and uh, hopefully Francesca, Francesco, you can jump in. Sure. Hey, Steph, thanks, thanks for the intro. Um, I'll quickly jump into slide sharing now, so bear with me as, as I'm clicking a few buttons. And also see my screen. Great. Um, so when um, I participated in Biomaker Challenge, I used to be a postdoctoral researcher at the university uh, in the engineering department. And uh, for, for all my doctoral studies, I specialized in fluid mechanics. Um, but now I moved into uh, a role at MathWorks uh, where I'm looking at way more topics like hardware for education, controls and robotics. And, and I've been working on, on a bunch of projects since, since then. Uh, and the things that I've learned in the Bangalore Challenge were instrumental to uh, many activities I've been running in, in my new position. So it's, it's been a great experience. Uh, I was the leader on a team which we um, uh, called LunaFlow. Uh, which uh, sought to uh, study the behavior of dinoflagellates, which are microorganisms uh, um, that uh, are a strand of plankton that uh, emits blue light when they're strained. And we had the wacky idea of trying to grow these dinoflagellates uh, to try and then use them for macroscopic fluid flow measurement. Um, and in doing so, what we did was for the project develop both an incubator that could, um, in which we could grow and feed these uh, cultures, and also develop a multi camera system which we could then use uh, to record them and hopefully reconstruct three dimensional images of the types of uh, flow patterns they would create. Um, and we had a good stab at it uh, using low-cost hardware. We, we started with the Biomaker kit and a bit of the funding and, and, and got a long way. So I just wanted to share a couple images from that experience just for fun. Uh, first of all, just introduce you to our team. We were composed of eight uh, uh, engineers, biologists, chemists, geophysicists, uh, all from a different background. Uh, just friends, which we, we which we managed to grab together and, and put to work for for a few months. Um, this is us at the final competition. We showed the dinoflagellates live for a bit of fun, and we and we brought uh, a whole lot of hardware that we we <laughs> assembled in, in in a rather rough way. So uh, you can see the incubator, but also the camera system on the left hand side. Uh, and then a, a better snapshot of, of Duncan with the incubator um, on the right. We came up with multiple designs. If you are trying to go for incubator projects, have a look at our Haxter. We tried multiple designs from Peltier heating device, uh, cooling devices to resistant heaters to um, water circuited heat exchangers. We, we tried a few things. Some things worked better than others. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. We, used a lot of the uh, hardware in the kit, but also the flexibility of having a bit of additional funding and us to prototype with different uh, types of hardware. So we, 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 we had a, a, an incubator which could uh, be used with remote monitoring that would upload data on a server. And it was, it was a neat design. Have a, have a look at the Haxit page for sure. And for the incubator, SOD was a great software platform to start prototyping and get up and running with, with the Arduino side of things. Um, this was our schematic for the control of the incubator. And if you, if you get a chance to follow the tutorials, you'll learn a lot about this as well. And finally, I was mostly looking at the camera side of things, given that my background is in fluids, but also in, in sort of imaging and vision. And this is a final look at this final multi-camera setup, which we ran off of for uh, Jetson nanoboards, which could acquire um, well four cameras in sync. Uh, and we created we we use MATLAB for the image acquisition and created some apps that could be used to to acquire 
so this is what they some of the prototypes look like and i just thought they would, we could share it so we we created some some guis which allowed for acquisition automatic camera calibration for stereo vision and it was a whole lot of fun and a great learning experience uh, overall, we we managed to film some dinoflagellates uh, uh, towards the end of the project, uh, but we were very ambitious of the project, so so uh, it kind of um, ended up there with with a great project based learning experience where we we learned a lot about hardware and biology at the same time. Um, so yeah, um, just enjoy it. It's, it can be a lot of fun, a lot of work, but uh, we don't uh, we definitely don't regret uh, being part of it. It was it was so much fun. Um, and yeah, that was our experience. If you have any questions, feel free to, to grab me after the after the talk. That's great. Um, yeah, as as you said, uh, if you're if you're happy to take questions, um, that would be fantastic. Um, feel free to stick around. So, how does it work? Um, obviously, there are some extra hurdles to kind of jump through this year. Um, but this is a brief overview of the the timeline at the moment. So, obviously, today we have this briefing and mixer. Hopefully uh, you'll get an opportunity to meet some other people who are interested in projects like this. Uh, you'll have um, a chance to discuss your interests, maybe throw around some ideas and uh, perhaps even start putting together your own team of people. Uh, you'll then have about three weeks um, in which the call is open. Um, so in that time you can put together a team either people you've met tonight, uh, colleagues, friends, um, and also, you know, if you're looking uh, for someone in a particular area, we can try and, and um, put you in contact with other people who might be interested in a similar project uh, and help with a bit of matchmaking there as well. Uh, so then once you've got your team together, uh, we will ask you to put together a short proposal. Uh, this is usually about two or three pages uh, just to give us an idea of what you want to do, um, how you are going to achieve that, and a kind of budget, things like that. Uh, so quite short, um, and you've got about three weeks to uh, after this to get this that together um, for the 6th of December. Then by the 11th of December, um, we will um, announce the, the winners. Um, we will then organise to provide them with uh, kits and funding, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. And then teams will have uh, essentially a month and a half then from mid-December to the end of January to get started with some initial project development, to start working uh, on what they're doing and get things ready uh, for the interim report in January. So at the end of January, uh, we'll bring all the teams together again. Uh, they can present and report a little bit on what they've done so far. And it's also an opportunity to pitch for further funding, so an additional £2,000 to carry on with your project and do some more development. Uh, that will take place uh, between January, January and April. So you'll have about three months there um, to do some more development, to get everything in line, to get everything documented uh, and to really work, work on your project with a bit more funding. Uh, and then in April 2021, uh, you'll be invited um, to uh, the Open Plant Forum where we'll have a final exhibition and um, we'll have a final report from all the teams on how their projects have progressed. So what should participants expect? What will you get out of this um, opportunity? Uh, well, obviously, um, as Francesco said, it was a great opportunity to learn new skills and to be part of a uh, a project that is working on real world applications. Um, you will also, each participant will receive a Biomaker expansion kit. Uh, you can have a look a little bit more information about this on our website, um, but this is essentially an extended Arduino board along with a, a big goodie bag full of um, useful devices and sensors to get you started with your project. In addition to each participant receiving a kit, uh, each team will have access to some additional useful hardware, uh, primarily a uh, programmable touchscreen to help you with a user interface and a totem maker kit, which can help um, building a chassis or, or building the kind of mechanics behind um, any instruments that you're building as well. 
Uh, we can also provide training materials and support. Um, so Francesco uh, mentioned Zod, uh, which is a, um, a way of programming Arduino boards without having to use written code. Uh, we have a number of training materials, tutorials, workshops, um, beginner's guides on how to use Zod uh, and specifically how to use it um, to get started with these kind of projects around biology. So we can uh, help you with that if you don't have much experience in that area. Uh, we can also provide support um, both in terms of bringing together teams if you're looking for people interested in that area. Um, kind of answering any questions, those kind of things. Um, so we're here to support you throughout the project. Uh, and finally, we um, can also provide funding. So the initial funding uh, in total is a thousand pounds, approximately 200 pounds of which is provided uh, in hardware, in the expansion kit and the uh, additional hardware for teams. So you'll then receive uh, 800 pounds worth of funding to, to buy any other equipment, uh, hardware, devices, consumables that you'll need for the project. Uh, as I mentioned before, in January, uh, there's an opportunity to pitch for more funding. And if you're successful, then you can receive up to another 2000 pounds worth of funding to carry on developing your project. Uh, so that is what you can expect from us. Uh, what do we expect from you in return? So, uh, the idea behind this project is that everything is open access, um, easily accessible and reusable by others. So you're expected to document um, your project and its progress on Hackster. Uh, for those that don't know, Hackster is a, uh, a web-based platform for documenting um, mostly electronics projects. Um, it's quite easy to use. Um, and you kind of just document what parts you've used, um, maybe some of the programming you've used and, and things like that. So, so that other people can take a look at what you've done and replicate it if they, if they desire. Uh, so that the open access um, and documentation is a really important part of this project. So we will expect um, anything you produce to be open access. Uh, as I said earlier, we, we will expect teams to provide a short report in, in January and pitch for additional funding. And then a final um, presentation, exhibition, celebration in April um, to show us all um, how your project has progressed. Uh, so eligibility criteria, uh, who can actually apply? Um, so each team needs to have at least one applicant who is a member, either a student or staff, at a partner institute. So that is the University of Cambridge, the John Innes Centre or the Earlham Institute in Norwich. Uh, that doesn't mean that if you are outside of those institutes, you can't take part, um, but we'll need to um, pair you up with, with a team um, based at the university so that we can provide funding for you. Uh, we are looking for interdisciplinary teams. Um, so as Jim said, this is all about bringing people together from different areas different areas of biology, different areas in terms of um, physical sciences, engineering, things like that, uh, and uh, teams across uh, institutes as well. Uh, so that's an important part of the criteria. Um, all funds uh, that you are provided with must be spent on hardware, consumables, materials for your project. That's pretty uh, basic. And again, in order to be eligible, you need to make sure that your project um, is available and reusable by others. Those are the kind of core criteria that you need to be able to apply. There are a couple of other things that we will look at when we're judging proposals to help us um, work out which projects uh, to fund. So again, interdisciplinarity. Um, do you have a, very, a variety of different expertise? and experience? Do you have um, people from different locations or institutes? Uh, we're especially keen to fund projects that uh, bridge Cambridge and Norwich uh, across our partner institutes. Um, and if you need help linking up with someone on the other side, let us know and we can try and um, see if there's anyone on, on the other side interested. 
uh, your project needs to have an interesting biological application. Uh, again, there are a couple of areas that we're um, really keen to fund projects in this year, including um, cell-free synthetic biology, uh, plant science and crop science, uh, and sensor technologies. Um, so those are the kind of projects that we'll be prioritizing this year. Uh, and we'll also look at feasibility. So uh, is the project that you have proposed actually feasible in the time that you have, with the money that you have, and with the team that you have, in terms of do you have the right expertise, do you have the right people on board? Finally, how can, how can I apply? Uh, so the first step is to gather together a team, uh, usually about four to six people, but that can be fairly flexible. Um, you'll have an opportunity tonight to meet people, hopefully um, share contact details if, you, if you're thinking of working together. Uh, as I said earlier, you can also um, look to your colleagues, um, you can talk to us if there's um, someone that you'd like to be put in touch with. Um, Basically, as long as you can get some people together um, around this project, um, you can put a team together and we can help you with that. Uh, so do let us know if you need help with that. Uh, once you have your team, you will write your proposal. Um, we'll provide a template for this. Uh, I'll upload it on the Biomaker website and I'll also send it out to all of the participants after the event today. Um, and you need to submit that by the 6th of December. And then by the 11th of December, we should uh, be able to notify teams who have been successful and start organizing um, for their projects to start. So uh, if you take a look at www.biomaker.org, um, as I said earlier, it's a great place to kind of look at previous projects, perhaps get some inspiration. Um, there is a page about the 2020 challenge that has a bit more information about things like the expansion kit um, what you'll receive in terms of that. Uh, there's also um, a, a call details page that will tell you a little bit more uh, about the specific eligibility and judging criteria um, that you'll need to um, that you'll need to address and uh, that that's where you'll be able to download the um, proposal template as well. And you can always contact uh, myself at uh, symbio at hermes.cam.ac.uk um, or I believe I sent everyone um, an email from my personal email account earlier as well. You can always contact me there as well if you have any questions. <laughs>